What's up everyone? It's your friendly neighborhood French Canadian and today I'll show you how to make a Rin Tosaka build in Elden Ring. Rin Tosaka is one of the main characters in the Fate series, so she is a mage aka a master, so she's the one who summons the heroes to fight with her in the Grail Wars. But she also fights because she is best girl and she's probably the best tsundere you'll ever meet. Now most of her attacks and most of her magic is red, which is unfortunate because all the glimstone sorcery in this game are blue, but I mean, just use your imagination. <laughs> she also uses these crystals uh, for her magic, so we can use those uh, glimstone shards that you can actually craft, but they cost FP when you use them, you have to craft them, and they don't do too much damage, but let's just say it's fun to incorporate in there to fight, because it does look exactly like her type of magic. Now we'll also be using a Terra Magica, because that's she kind of does a circle like that when she's summoning a warrior to fight for her, but Terra Magica will boost her magic, so it's a win-win, honestly. And we'll be using a Glenstone Chris as our main weapon, because I just feel that this dagger really fits with her. Now, unfortunately, fashion-wise, there wasn't a lot we could do to make it look like Rin, so again, we'll have to use our imagination. Now, let's go over the stats. Um, as well as one of the talismans we'll be using and the staff because it's all connected. I'll explain everything you need to know. So basically at level uh, 150, you want to have 47 vigor, 50 mind, 35 endurance, 12 dexterity to be able to use the dagger, and a 60 intelligence because that is the soft cap for the staff. The soft cap period, like let's say you were using um, Carrion Light Sword would be 50. But because we're using a staff, we're going with 60 intelligence. Now, as you can see, we don't have any points in dexterity. And dexterity is specifically responsible to reduce casting time. Now, the reason we're not going to spend any points in there is because we'll be using the Radagon icon. Now, the Radagon icon decreases your spell casting time, but in reality, it gives you 30 invisible dexterity that you can't see in your stats. But it still adds that dexterity. Now the Azure Staff does the same thing, where just using it gives you 40 invisible dexterity. So let's say you start with a wretch, you're at 80 dexterity, and the cap to have the lowest casting time possible is actually 70. So not only are we not spending points in dexterity, and instead using it all for FP and Vigor, which we'll need a lot of, we're capping our dexterity with the equipment we have. So that is how this build is going to work. You're going to cast extremely quickly, you're going to do a ton of damage, but you're definitely going to be using a ton of FP. So make sure to have a lot of blue raspberry juice on you when you're fighting. Especially when you're fighting big mobs, bosses will take way less FP, because you'll be using the Comet, fully charged Comet, to basically just disintegrate their health bars. Stars of Rune is super great. You want to go into a fight, any fight really, but especially a boss fight. You'll be using the Carrion Phalanx, and you'll use the Stars of Rune and charge it up, and these two will actually hit the enemy at the same time, uh, obviously if you're close enough, and you can also increase that damage further by using Terra Magica and making sure you stand in it. But you'll also gain that boost in a magic damage, if you get out of it for a few seconds after. But if you want to keep it on the entire time, you need to stay in it. Now, all of these spells that we're going to be using can be charged. The Stars of Rune, the Comet, as well as uh, the Ash of War on our Glintstone Chris on our Dagger. It also can be charged, but just be careful because it's very short range, so you won't catch anyone uh, just like you will with the Stars of Rune or the Comet from really far away. You need to be super close. So when you're close to the enemy, you just want to use the Ash of War on your dagger. And the Crystal Burst, again, is going to be your AoE, which is really good to hit a lot of enemies at once, especially if they're surrounding you. And again, it can be charged. Those are the spells that I think fit a lot with Rin as a character. You also you want to use a summon, because that's pretty much what she does in the show. So you want to summon anyone as an archer, really, as the archer class is who she summons. And you can never go wrong with a magic build because you won't have any problems from the beginning of the game to the very end of it, mostly. <laughs> so now that we looked at the build entirely, I want to show you guys where to get everything you need to make it. There isn't a lot of options fashion-wise, unfortunately, that looks like Rin because she wears like a kind of a schoolgirl outfit with a short skirt and stuff like that. So you can use the uh, Raya Lucarian robe, which is what I'm using, with the Nox Greaves, because I think the uh, 
the grease themselves are really cool. Or you could also do the Albridge Altered Sip, but it doesn't have any red on it except for the gloves, which is unfortunate because it would look pretty cool. For the weapon, the Glenstone Chris is acquired at the end of Celine's questline. Uh, if you don't know how to do that or if you never finished it, I do have a video showing the entire questline step by step, but it does drop for you at the end. Of it. The Azure Glintstone staff is located pretty far, so you want to take the debate parlor side of Grace and I'll show you the exact way from here. And that's where you'll find the Azur's like, glintstone staff. Let's take a look at the talismans. We'll be using the Graven Mass Talisman to do more damage. The Radagon Icon, which will increase our dexterity, which will decrease our casting time. Godfrey Icon, which will increase charged spells, which will enhance the damage on the charged spells. And most of them, uh, and most of them can be charged. And the Magic Scorpion Charm to raise our magic attack. The Graven Mass Talisman is found in the mountain tops of the Giants, right here in Albanaric Rise. But it's in the secret consecrated snowfield area, so you need two of the Halic Tree and Medallions to be able to get there. And it will be in that rise. And the Radagon Icon Talisman is found in the Academy. You want to take the Parlor Side of Grace, which would be here. And as soon as you get out of that building and get out of the gate, you want to go right, then go right again and jump over a railing, and then you just follow the path and it's pretty easy, you'll find it in a chest. The Godfrey Icon is located in the Altus Plateau. You'll need to go to this Everjail right here, and you'll need to fight Godfrey, and he will drop uh, the Talisman right here. The Magic Scorpion Charm, you'll have to complete quest questline to the very end, or you can also get someone to drop it for you because not a lot of people want to complete that quest line since it will interfere with your Ronnie quest line. Now, as I mentioned uh, the first part of the video, this will add 30 dexterity, but you won't see it in your stats. Star Shower can be bought from either Source for Selen, Celevis, or the Turtle Pope at the Church of the Vows. But you needed to bring them the Conspectus Scroll first, which you find in the Academy. Terra Magica is found after you defeat the Academy Crystal Case boss, which is the two, I think, or three uh, Crystallians, which are pretty easy to take down. And the Crystal Cave is located in this area. You'll have to go uh, through the lake to get there. To find the Comet spell, uh, you want to come to the Schoolhouse Classroom side of Grace, and I'll show you where to go. And that is where you find that spell. To get the Crystal Burst spell, it's pretty easy. You want to make your way to the Weaving Peninsula. And you want to go to the Demi-Human Forest Runes and fight the Demi-Human Queen there. You'll get a Staff as well as the Crystal Burst spell. To get a Carry and a Phalanx, there are two ways you can go about this. You can do parts of uh, Celibus's quest line, which at some point it will be available for you to purchase from him. Or you can just kill him and bring the Bell Bearing to the Twin Maiden Husks at round table hold and then you can buy it from them. So you should have everything you need to make this build. Let me know what you think. I really hope you've enjoyed it. So have yourself a wonderful day and I'll see you all very soon.